Assalamu alaikum dear students this is department of english government post graduate college atik i am nasir ali shah assistant professor of english students we are reading the first chapter of the textbook the dying sun written by sir james jeans in our previous lecture we read that the stars which are numerous in this universe which are uncountable they are extremely hot that life cannot exist on the stars and the most part of the space which is empty space which is far away from the stars that part of space is extremely cold that all life in it would be frozen and the writer tells us that life can only be possible at such a place in this universe or at such a planet in this universe where the temperature is suitable for the matter to exist in liquid state it means that the most important physical condition for life to come into existence or to survive is a proper normal temperature which means neither too hot nor too cold today we shall read the last paragraph of this chapter the sentence is life can exist only in a narrow belt surrounding each of these fires at a certain distance where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold having dis discussed in the previous paragraph that life is very rare in this immense universe where there are billions of stars and this universe comprises of billions even trillions of miles of distance it is almost unlimited for a human being this universe so in this huge and very vast universe life is very rare means so far we the human beings cannot Ha or have not been able to find signs of life upon any other planet or any other star so the writer here tells us that in this universe life can be possible or life can exist only in a narrow belt narrow mean limited and belt mean a uh, long strip something here the writer is talking about the distance in the space so the life can exist only in a narrow belt mean only it can exist in a narrow strip or in a narrow limited area surrounding each of these fires which area or which narrow belt the writer is talking about the writer is in fact talk talking about the limited area or limited uh place or distance in this space which is around each of the star which the writer calls fires or collection of fires means the those stars which are extremely hot at a certain distance so life can exist around each star which is extremely hot and at a certain suitable distance which the writer calls a narrow belt narrow belt of distance where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold means where the temperature is supposed to be normal it should not be extremely hot nor it should be extremely cold because in case of the temperature being too hot all 
solids would melt and all liquids would begin to boil or eventually evaporate and in case of extremely cold temperature each and everything would be frozen here the writer explains this point in the next sentence outside these belts life would be frozen outside these belts mean if we go away or if we go at a larger distance away from the stars where the temperature would be extremely cold so the writer says that away from these belts life would be frozen mean any living being if happens to be there in that distance where the temperature is extremely cold all life would be frozen or all living things would be frozen inside it would be burned up inside mean inside those temperature belts means inside those areas which are at a normal distance where the temperature is normal inside means if we go close to the stars if we go close to the stars which are extremely hot which are just like collection of us definitely their temperature would be extremely high so if we go inside these belts life would be burnt up I mean any living being or any living thing would be burnt up a rough calculation shows calculation mean estimation a rough estimation or calculation shows that all such temperature belts within which life is possible mean all such temperature belts mean all the areas of normal temperature around each of the star where the temperature is normal and the life is possible all added together if we add up or uh, collect all that areas or distances where the temperature is suitable or relatively normal around each of the star in this universe make up less than a thousand million million parts of the whole of space it means that the whole of space is extremely huge and vast and almost unlimited for us to think so the normal temperature area areas where the temperature is normal for life it makes up less than a thousand million millionth part of the whole of space mean it makes up a very little space as compared to the whole of the universe and even inside them life must be very rare this is only one condition which the writer is talking about here that life can be possible in this space or in this universe anywhere where the temperature is normal whereas life needs Uh, certainly other suitable conditions so if according to the suitable or normal temperature where the life can be possible even then the writer says that life must be very rare around other stars for it is extremely unusual for suns to throw off planets as our sun is done because there wouldn't be any planet going around that star at a suitable distance as some planets especially our earth is revolving around the sun at a suitable distance where the temperature is suitable for life so it is very unusual for the other suns the writer calls other stars which are extremely hot the suns so for the other stars or for the other suns it is extremely unusual mean it is very uncommon thing for them to throw off the stars uh, to, uh, sorry to throw off the planets as our sun is done what our sun is done we have read at the start of this chapter the writer told us about a rare event which according to the writer happened some 2000 million years ago because uh, that a very ha- huge and very large star came near to the sun and due to its ex- attraction a uh, huge part of gaseous matter was torn away from the surface of the sun it scattered into space in form of different pieces and gradually they became cooler they began circulating around the sun 
and they became planets and our earth is one of them so this was the event which writer described earlier and here the writer says that for other stars or for other suns it is extremely uncommon thing that there would be some planet going around them at a so suitable distance as our earth is going around this sun at a proper and suitable distance probably only one star in 100000 has a planet going around it at a right distance for life to be possible in it so this is the rough calculation probably uh it is just an imagination or guess of the writer that uh out of 100000 stars there may be only one star that around it at a suitable distance a planet may be revolving or circulating where the temperature would be normal so the students this chapter is completed let's revise some of its main points or important points at the start of the chapter the writer tells us <clears throat> that this universe is very huge very vast <clears throat> and the stars which are numerous or uncountable most of the stars are millions of times bigger than the earth and our earth seems to be just like a grain of sand in comparison with those huge stars then the writer tells us about if this those numberless stars are <clears throat> uh so much in number are wandering about in space <clears throat> how much the distance between them would be the writer tells us that the minimum distance between the two stars or the two neighboring stars which would be very close to one another there would be minimum distance is at least uh <clears throat> 1 million miles and the rest would be even far away than this so due to this huge distance between the stars it is very difficult or almost impossible for stars to come close to each other but the writer in the next paragraph tells us uh such type of uh, rare event which according to the writer happened about 2000 million years ago and uh, a very huge star it was even bigger than this sun uh, <clears throat> huge star wandering through space came close to the sun and due to its attraction uh, a gaseous matter or a mountain of gaseous matter was formed on the surface of the sun and as the star uh, the other star began to move away again from the sun that mountain of gaseous matter which was being pulled towards that other star due to its attraction it was torn away from the surface of the sun and it was scattered into space uh, into different pieces and gradually with the passage of time maybe with the passage of thousands of years or millions of years those stars which were separated from the sun they became cool <coughs> and they came to be known as planets and our earth is one of them so the writer tells uh, us about the creation of the earth how our earth was created or formed then in the next paragraph the writer tells us about the creation of the earth how uh, sorry creation of the life life how life came into existence the writer tells us that at the start the life uh came into being in the form of little organisms very humble beginnings which were very small very weak and they had just power enough to reproduce themselves before dying and with the passage of millions of years <clears throat> they uh, some physical changes occurred 
into their bodies they became uh, bigger in size uh, different systems were evolved in their bodies uh, respiratory system blood circulation system as well as uh, reproduction system and different other physical systems were uh, evolved or created in their bodies uh, so different species came into being out of those humble beginnings and in the end a uh, rare type of species which is very intelligent which has ambitions and feelings and sense of beauty and also has a sense of religion uh, in which lie their highest hopes and noblest desires that species in the end uh, which according to the scientists it is uh, the most superior to all the uh, living beings that is human beings so uh, here in this paragraph the writer tells us about the creation of life on us then ahead in the next paragraph the writer tells us about where in this huge universe life can exist or come into being the writer uh, divides the whole of the universe into three parts uh, one part of this universe uh, may be called the stars which are numberless which are uncountable they are very huge millions of times bigger than the earth but they are extremely hot they are just like the collection of fire so the life is not possible on the stars the other part of this universe is empty space which is very far away from those stars where there the warmth or heat of the stars does not reach there the temperature into empty space is extremely cold nothing can survive there any living thing if there happens to be in that empty a cold space it would be frozen so these are the two major divisions of this whole of the universe uh, according to the temperature and the third part of this universe the writer calls in the last paragraph which we have just read that is a suitable temperature belt the writer uh, means from uh, this temperature belt the place or area of the space which is at a suitable distance from the stars where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold it means that according to the normal temperature life can exist there but this is only one condition which is needed for <clears throat> the life uh, certainly life needs uh, uh, other some other important conditions which are not present uh, <clears throat> anywhere in this universe upon any other planet or any other star or in the space except this little planet which is earth so these are the main points <clears throat> which we read in this chapter in our next lecture we shall discuss the important questions of this chapter till then allah is good boy